So for mm -hmm. a couple of years, I tried to hone in my algorithm on how would you achieve a 100% sleep score every single night. And within sleep, there are a few metrics that you can determine someone's biological age. So for example, uh, wake after sleep onset, which is called WASO, is, an age, is a marker for age. And so the older you get, the more time you spend up at night. So you go to sleep and you wake up and sometimes people will be up one, two, three, maybe even four hours a night, or even just get up and that's, that, that's a, uh, all the sleep they'll get. And so having a WASO less than 30 minutes is my target. So once you go to sleep, right. you want to stay asleep. And if you do wake up, you want to be able to go back to sleep as one example of a marker. And so there are characteristics within sleep of what is ideal sleep. And these, of course, are representations of how your body is functioning. And so if you're sleeping very poorly, you've got some kind of issue somewhere. And so we've tried to basically iron these out. And this, all these things uh, probably don't make sense to people, and they probably understand them to be erratic, and, you know, <laughs> eccentric and weird and all sorts of things like that, unless you understand the context, which is I set out to pose this question, could I build an algorithm that takes better care of me than I can myself? And the observation was that technology has done that in several areas. Technology, for example, is better at flying airplanes than we humans can. It is better at um, you know, navigating us on the road. It is better at uh, doing certain kind of language processing. And so when algorithms achieve a certain point that they achieve human ability, we adopt those algorithms and we, now, we allow them to do them in our lives. And I was posing the question, of something that we consider to be quite sacred, which is you know, a person's decisions about what they eat and when they go to bed is something that we've typically have said, that's the human domain of free will and preference that you know, I'll choose when I want to go to bed based upon these considerations, including whether my favorite show just dropped or whether I'm doing this or that. And I wanted to pose the question in this technological age we're in, can an algorithm paired with science in fact, take better care of me than I can myself. And so that's what the result of this entire protocol is, is that probing that question. I think on one hand, this type of thing does sound eccentric, but on the other hand, if you flip the burden of proof for a moment and consider what we you know, deem to be the norm in you know, America in 2024, that actually seems awfully um, bizarre. The fact that it is seen as sort of standard to essentially poison your body with sugar, to be mm -hmm. overnourished by getting far too many calories, to have you know very sedentary lifestyles, and then to be you know completely dropping the ball on sleep and sleep quality, right? Like on one you, hand, you mean on like an evolutionary time scale? This is yeah, the outlier, exactly. Right? We are the outlier. We are the like what is seen as like the standard American diet and the standard American way of living, and in much of the world too, right? Like Mexico is no better than we are. Um, you know, tons of tons of countries are no better than we are. But like, it's odd that Brian's routine would be seen as the eccentric outlier when in reality what we are currently doing on mass, what we consider to be standard and normal is highly disturbing. Liz, I've done a lot of interviews. Mm -hmm. You are the first person to say that. Really? Mm -hmm. That's surprising to me. I mean, I, uh, I agree with you. I think that norms are insane. Yeah. Hmm. Liz is ready to get on the blueprint. It sounds like <laughs> it, it, I mean, it, so I, I read through some of your book. This is reminding me of a, a, a passage from your book, which is called Don't Die. <laughs> and uh, the passage that I have highlighted here, uh, you say we're about to ex experience an evolutionary transition on a scale rarely seen, a transition whose closest approximation is the changes written by evolution from early hominids 2 million years ago all the way to humanity today. What is that evolutionary transition you're alluding to and what is driving it? We now have the ability to engineer existence, including atoms and molecules and organisms biological systems, our digital reality, computers, we have the ability to engineer almost every layer of existence from the physical world to our digital world. Now we haven't yet uh, gotten our ability to do things like complex systems like the weather. We don't have the ability to control that yet. 
So we're working our way up the stack in terms of the complexity we can tackle and the body is still not entirely known. We're still trying to figure our way out, but we have the basic admin access. We have root level access to the controls of reality. And when you have that and you have on the flip side, intelligence that is in improving at speeds that are un, are incomprehensible to us you have the making of a rewrite of existence and so to put this into slightly technical terms homo sapiens for the past 200,000 years have been a a first principles thinking species so we acquire knowledge we are the stewards of knowledge we individually and we collectively own knowledge we do so in books we do so in our brains we do so in in conversation and AI is going to become the steward of knowledge. It will be better at acquiring knowledge and generating new knowledge than we can. It will do so at a speed that won't allow anyone to keep up with the pace of it. So we humans are transitioning from a first principle species to a zeroth principle species. And zeroth principle means it's the unknown unknown. So for example, a zeroth principle discovery is Einstein's discovery of special theory of relativity. You can't get there through Newtonian physics you pull it from another dimension. And so we as a species are going from knowing things to not knowing things. And so that's mm -hmm. why it's the biggest transformation in the history of our species. It fundamentally turns on its head the primary thing that has allowed our intelligence to thrive. So will we, when you say that we're, you're gonna, you're already following a sort of algorithm that yeah. you've put together, but is what you're imagining an algorithm that we don't even fully understand. We just know that it works. So this is what you should follow if you want to live to be 500 years old or something like that. Exactly. You can think of the parallel like the stock market. And so right now we are in the early days of our bodies. We say, eat this kind of food, take this kind of supplement, you know, just do this mm -hmm. kind of exercise and sleep this much. As we mature in the technology, internally we'll have technology treating our body like a stock market. It will be doing real time transactions on genes and proteins and this biological process. And it will be doing these things at a speed that are incomprehensible to us. We won't know exactly what's happening. You're just applying AI to it. At that point, it exceeds our ability. We cannot control things at the genome, at the genetic level. We have other instruments to do that. And so, yes, it's mm. going to basically surpass our level of abstraction and reach. And that's, it's happening right now. It will just be much more robust. And so what Blueprint is, is an analog version of an algorithm running me with the tools we have today, but fast forward in some duration of time, mm. and it's a high speed transaction engine. Everybody will be, and it's maintaining a pristine state at all times. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our new show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. New episodes drop every week, so subscribe to Reason TV's YouTube channel to get notified when that happens, or to the Just Asking Questions podcast on Apple, Spotify, or any other podcatcher. See you next week.